In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, what are the rating factors for an electrical circuit? Now, just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of circuit design. They can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate to prove that you've completed the course. So in the previous videos in this series, we calculated design current and we figured out the circuit breaker size from BG Electrical that we'd use for a circuit feeding this Fusion Comet electric boiler from the electric heating company. So what's next? Well, now I need to figure out what current my cable needs to be able to carry in the way that it's been installed. Now again, at this point, we could go a slightly different route due to the fact that the circuit is feeding a fixed load and therefore technically doesn't require overload protection. Circuits that can have additional loads easily connected by non-electricians like socket outlets and lighting points with lamp holders can get overloaded, as well as circuits that feed motors that might experience extra mechanical loading for some reason, they're subject to overload. But this fixed load is very unlikely to experience it. But we're going to treat this circuit as if it does need it, because it gives a more thorough explanation of the installation process, and it's fairly standard practice to do so. We'll have a look at how designing a circuit without overload protection differs in a future video. So it would be logical to think that the cable we install needs to be able to carry 50 amps without causing any damage to itself or the fabric of the building. Now, if we installed the cable for this circuit hung freely supported in the air with no other cables near it and the room wasn't especially hot, then a cable that was able to carry just exactly 50 amps would be just fine. However, remember our enemy in all of this design process and electrical installation is mainly heat. So if we bunch our cable with a load of others, or if the temperature of the air surrounding the cable was warmer than usual, or if the cable was run through loft or cavity wall insulation, all of these would make it harder for our cable to dissipate the heat it generates, which could lead to the consequences previously discussed. So how much current the cable can handle is directly related to how it's installed. Therefore, to figure out what size of cable to install, we may need to take the factors we've just mentioned, as well as some others, in order to rate our cable. In fact, we refer to these as rating factors. You may hear some people call them correction factors because that's what they used to be called in older editions of the regulations. We find them in various documents, but for now, we'll stick to the ones that we find in the on-site guide and cover some of the others in another training package. In Appendix F of the guide, we find this formula. IT must be greater than or equal to IN divided by CA times CG times CI times CF. So it looks a little bit daunting to start with, but it's pretty straightforward when we break it down. I with a lowercase t in the subscript means the tabulated current carrying capacity of a cable. Tabulated just means recorded in a table. And we'll look at those tables in just a moment. IN, we already know, is the nominal rating of the protective device, and all those Cs along the bottom of the formula are our rating factors. CA is a factor we apply depending on the ambient temperature of the area the cable is installed in. We can find the numbers to pop in there in table F1 of the on-site guide. As you can see, it's made up of five different columns in total. The first is the ambient temperature value, and it goes up in fives in this table, from 25 degrees up to 40 degrees. The other columns relate to different types of insulation or cable. The first type is 70 degrees C thermoplastic, which is the type of insulation you find on PVC insulated twin and CPC cable. Then you've got 90 degrees C thermo setting, which is what you'd find on XLP insulated steel wire armoured cable. Then the final two columns relate to mineral insulated cables, which have become pretty uncommon except in specialist installations these days. There is additional information in BS7671 Appendix 4 on ambient temperature, but we'll look at that in a more advanced training package on electrical design. So let's assume that we're going to wire our electric boiler in twin and CPC cable with 70 degrees C thermoplastic insulation. If the ambient temperature in the installation is 30 degrees C, then the rating factor you can see here will be 1. Now, this is significant because it means that a temperature of 30 degrees C will not affect the current carrying capacity of the cable, because if you divide a number by 1, it doesn't change its value. If, however, the ambient temperature goes up to 35 degrees, we get a rating factor of 0.94. So how does this affect our cable rating? Well, let's ignore all the other rating factors for now and investigate the numbers that we've got already. So if we replace the IN value at the top of the equation with our MCB rating of 50 amps and then pop the value of 0.94 into the bottom, what does that do to our cable rating? Well, 50 divided by 0.94 gives us 53.2. 
So our cable installed in that ambient temperature doesn't need to be able to carry 50 amps, it needs to be able to carry 53.2 amps. Now that may not sound like much of a difference, but it may mean the difference between two different sizes of cable. But what if the ambient temperature goes up to 40 degrees C? Now that is getting quite toasty, but could easily happen as we're seeing in our increasingly hot summers in the UK. What impact will that have on our cable? Well, table F1 gives us a factor of 0.87. Now, if we put that into our calculation, instead of 0.94, what will happen to the output? Well, because we're dividing by a smaller number, it's going to make our answer bigger. So now we get a value of 57.5, meaning that our cable needs to be able to cope with even more current passing through it, namely 57.5 amps. Now, it's important at this point, just to clarify, that we're not saying more current will run through the cable because the room it passes through is hotter, but rather that because the air in the room has got hotter, it makes it harder for our cable to dissipate the heat generated inside it, which in turn may mean we need to install a cable with larger conductors because the larger the cable, the more heat it can dissipate. What about the other rating factors that we mentioned earlier? CG is the rating factor for grouping, so what effect will this have on our cable? Grouping is when two or more cables are run together, and we need to take it into consideration because of the heat dissipation issue again. If two or more cables are in proximity with each other, then it becomes harder for each cable to dissipate the heat it's generating because it's being affected by the heat from its neighbour. You can imagine the challenge our cable would have to lose its heat if it's bundled into trunking with a whole heap of other circuits. So again, we need to make allowance for that when selecting our cable size. We get the information on the rating factor for grouping from table F3 of the on-site guide. Down the left-hand side of this table, we've got four potential ways that cables could be installed bunched together in any way, whether that's on a surface, buried in a wall, or in a containment system like trunking, then in a single layer on the wall or floor, in a single layer on tray, and finally on cable ladder or similar. Then across the top, there's the number of circuits you've got grouped together from one to 12 with the relevant rating factors below. The final column on the right-hand side shows what are called reference methods for the way the cables are installed. We'll use those to help find our cable size in just a moment. If you're not sure which reference method you should be using, you can match the description as closely as you can from the left-hand column. And also, there's some helpful information in table 4A2 of BS76M1, but again, more on that in another module. So let's assume that we're working in a domestic installation for our electric boiler, and that we're clipping the cable to a surface. That gives us reference method C from the right-hand column, and maybe we've got another circuit alongside it, so two in total. Two circuits in a single layer on the wall gives us a factor of 0.85. This goes into our formula under the division line, and 50 divided by 0.85 gives us 58.8 amps. So grouping our cable with others means it needs to be able to carry much more current than if it weren't grouped. Interestingly, if we just bunched those cables together and somehow clipped them to the surface, we'd have to use a factor of 0.80, meaning our cable would need to carry even more current. Now again, grouping is a little more complex than we've discussed here, and there's times when you may not need to take grouping into account even when cables are run together. But again, we're looking at the basic principles here, so check out our other training modules in this series for further information. Now, at this point, you're hopefully asking a good question. What about if the cable is grouped and runs through an area of high ambient temperature of 35 degrees C? Which rating factor applies? Well, if the cable is experiencing both of those conditions at the same time, then the answer is you apply both. Remember the formula we looked at earlier showed all the applicable rating factors multiplied together. So in this case, we'd have our rating factor CA of 0.94 for the ambient temperature of 35 degrees C, and the rating factor CG of 0.85 for two cables installed on a single layer on a surface multiplied together on the bottom of the formula. So that's 0.94 times 0.85, giving us 0.799 on the bottom row. 50 divided by 0.799 gives us 62.58 amps. So you can see it makes quite a difference to the amount of current that the cable needs to be able to carry from 50 amps all the way up to 62.58 amps. If, however, the cable experiences the different environmental conditions in different places, you wouldn't need to combine the values. So if it ran alongside the other cable for part of an installation, but this was within an area without a raised ambient temperature, and then the two circuits split and the boiler cable was on its own, but went into a boiler room where the ambient temperature was elevated, then it's experiencing different factors in different places. 
To accommodate this, you'd make sure the cable could cope in the harsher of the two conditions by applying the worst rating factor. In this example, it would be the grouping factor of 0.85, as this is the smaller number and would give the larger value for current carrying capacity when the division is carried out. The next rating factor we'll cover in this video is C with a lowercase i in the subscript, where the i stands for insulation. Now, this insulation is not the insulation stopping you from touching the conductor. It refers to thermal insulation, such as you may find in a loft or in a cavity wall. If you run a cable through thermal insulation, it has a significant impact on your cable because it's designed to prevent the easy passage of heat. So if your cable runs through it or is even in contact with it, then it can't dissipate its heat very easily at all. The severity of this impact can be found in table F2 of the on-site guide, where we find the length of the cable surrounded by insulation is measured in just millimetres. The first value is just 50 millimetres long. So if your cable runs through just five centimetres of thermal insulation, which is about the thickness of the rock wall in a cavity wall, then you need to apply a rating factor of 0.88. And we're probably starting to get an idea of how significant the impact of that could be on the amount of current the cable needs to be able to carry. Just to emphasise the point, if we pass the cable through 500 millimetres of thermal insulation, which is only half a metre, we need to apply a rating factor of 0.5. That means we need to double the amount of current that our cable can carry. That's quite a big deal, and maybe makes you think uneasily about all those poor one millimeter cables that we've buried under loft insulation over the years. Finally, in the rating factors, you can see that we've got C with an F in the subscript. This relates to the occasions you may use a fuse to protect the circuit. A fuse is generally slower to operate when a fault occurs, meaning that high current may flow in the conductor for longer. This means that the cable may need to be larger to dissipate the increased heat this creates without causing damage. If you're using a BS3036 fuse, an example of which is the old rewirable fuse with the replaceable wire in it, then you may need to apply a rating factor of 0.725 to the calculation. You also need to have a good long look at your life and ask yourself why you're not using a better protective device. Now, for the sake of our example, we're going to use the values for CA and CG as discussed, but not use CF as I wouldn't install a new circuit off a BS3036 fuse, and I'll avoid thermal insulation like the plague because it's really not good for our cables. So, to supply our electric boiler here, we're going to need a cable that will carry 62.58 amps as we previously calculated. So there we go, we now know what we mean by rating factors for a circuit and how to apply them. To find out how to select the correct size cable, check out this video right here, or click the link in the description below to watch it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a certificate as well. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.